Today we're with Dr. Mark Stevenson, noted dairy economist at the University of Wisconsin. He just participated in a webinar for Farm Credit East folks and gave a detailed uh, outlook for dairy in 2019, uh, creating quite a wide, uh, broad analysis. We're gonna ask him in this conversation to kind of cut to the chase and hit some of his highlights as he looks at dairy in 2019. Welcome, Dr. Stevenson, thank you. Thank you, Joel, happy to be here. Uh, one of your uh, present, one of your points that you made during the discussion toward the end of the of the session was your outlook contributing factors, the the points that you feel uh, impact really what what's going to happen in dairy. Maybe you could share those positives and negatives as you see them. Yeah, I would be happy to. Um, I think we do have a few things pushing in both directions, uh, and they you know of course give me some wiggle room on my price forecast, but. Um, we have slowing U.S. and world milk production. So here in the United States, uh, we still are increasing milk production, but at a decreasing rate. We had been above 2% increases about two years ago, and currently, you know, we're just about a half a percent increase. So milk production increases are slowing. The European Union is just essentially flat. They uh, had a bad milk production year, a lot of drought, and there's low milk prices are taking their toll there as well. New Zealand has been up, but uh, collectively the whole world's milk production is slowing down. So that's a good thing. World stocks of dairy products are also being pulled down, uh, particularly the intervention stocks that Europe's been holding. They're about half of the volume they were just a few months ago. And uh, there's expectation that those stocks will be gone by halfway through 2019. That I think gives us some real room to have um, some buoyancy in the marketplace. We've also had a relatively strong domestic economy um, that's been helping us consume dairy products here at home. We've had some trade improvements. Uh, Mexico's been picking up the pace purchasing dairy products. And then finally, you know, it's a little bit of a question mark, but El Nino uh, is in effect. That's that warm body of uh, water over in the Pacific. It gives us some drier, milder winters for the most part. Uh, in this country, but on the other side of the Pacific, Australia and oftentimes New Zealand, it's much hotter and drier over there. Australia has been feeling that. New Zealand hasn't so much yet, but it may well. So those are the things that I think kind of push up on our price forecasts. Uh, some of the negative factors, New Zealand milk production has had a strong start to their production year. Um, they've been producing more milk than ever before at this point in time. So uh, they're putting out a lot of production. We've had slow growth in economies, the gross domestic product in countries like China. Um, it's still enviable by our measures, but it's slow. And our prolonged trade negotiations with countries like China and even Mexico still, we have a retaliatory tariffs on cheese because of steel and aluminum tariffs from the U.S., and finally, you know, I hold out that there's a possibility of recession. There's some of those clouds that are way out on the horizon, but they're starting to show that uh, we may well have a slowdown in our economy. That would not help our dairy product sales at all. That's good. Thank you for that overview. Uh, with all of those factors impinging on dairy, uh, what is your forecast then as you look ahead to 2019? Well, when I assemble all those pieces and try to think about what we're going to be facing, I think we're going to have a better year of prices. I mean, in fact, I'm almost sure of that. We're, we're seeing that happening right now. Um, by my forecasts, I'm looking at a $1.10 increase in class three milk prices um, over the course of the year and a class four being up by an average of about $1.80. That would give us, in my uh, estimation, an all-milk price that would be up by about $1.15. Normally, the all-milk price would be up a bit higher than that, but this is reflecting weak premiums that we're seeing in many parts of the country. So I think that um, it's not just the regulated minimum prices, it's also the premiums being paid. Um, we're losing more of our dairy farms. In uh, the upper Midwest, we have month-to-month -month numbers, and we can see it. Normally, our attrition rate is 3.5% to 4% uh, per year, but this year it's up over 7.5% right now. 
Um, I have looked at a few other states that have those numbers. And while they may differ from that a little bit, they're, they're pretty much up across the board. But we aren't losing our capacity to produce milk. Even with fewer farms, we're still making more milk in this country. So those are the kind of bottom lines, I guess, that I'm drawing this year on milk prices. One point that you made, uh, kind of the final point on your presentation, was talking about uh, a phrase that we hear not only in dairy, but uh, in other elements of the economy. The, the phrase is the new normal. Uh, j just comment a little bit about how you see that uh, in terms of a dairy reference. Yeah, I'm happy to. You know, it would be no headline at all if we just said we're losing dairy farms. You know, we've been doing that since the 1930s. Um, and most of our prices, the ups and downs that we've seen, a lot of the other sort of uh, um, impacts that we've, we've had in the dairy industry have been along some kind of trend line, maybe with little wiggles along the way, but not too much. I think that when we look back, we're going to see that this time period represents a change, kind of a kink or a different pace after this. And I'm not sure that dairy is going to look the same. And, you know, again, time will tell, but we'll be looking back here and maybe five years from now we'll go, oh, that was a turning point for us. And it may be more like the new normal. I'm not suggesting that these milk prices are going to be where they're at, but we found people who have been cash flowing all the way through this downturn in milk prices over the last four years. Um, so the urge to produce and the ability to produce is there. Um, we, we, we may well do it with fewer assets than we did before. Well, we uh, appreciate your uh, candid assessments. Uh, you don't always have good news for us, but you, you have the news for us, and, and we appreciate your analysis. I'm with Dr. Mark Stevenson at the University of Wisconsin, dairy economist, and this is Joel Hastings for This Week in Dairy at dairybusiness.com.